Corporate Finance OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in OneNote related to a nonlinear break-even analysis. In other words, when we make these assumptions for the break-even analysis, we're often considering a nice smooth pattern, a linear type of analysis. What happens when we have a nonlinear type of analysis, a relationship that isn't quite as smooth? Get ready. It's time to take your chance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you would like to follow along in OneNote, you're not required to do so, but if you have access to it and would like to, we are in the 524 nonlinear break-even analysis tab in the practice problems section. Closing this back out, we're going to be reading through the information up top, then we'll take a look at a smaller component of that information as we use it to work through the practice problem. So we're going to have a situation where the information on revenue and costs is only relevant up to a sales volume of 107,000. In other words, we're going to be thinking about a situation where we have kind of a linear relationship up to a certain point, And then past that point, we could have some other thing that's going to be taking place. For example, after this point, the market gets saturated and the price per unit falls from 18 to 14. So in other words, we might be saying, well, look, we can make the sales uh, on these units up to we're going to guess 107,000 at a, a higher price and charge a higher price $18 per unit for it. But once we get a past a certain point, then we're going to have to charge a lower price. So we might be able to increase the sales, but but we're not going to be able to sell them at the same price because you can imagine now that the they're saturated. There's too many of them out there. The demand then will go down. We might still be able to sell them, but we'd have to be lowering the price. Now, as you think about these kind of things, you might be saying, well, how in the world would you know that? And obviously, we need to make projections. We're making assumptions into the future in order to make this type of, of analysis. So uh, when we think about into the future, all we can take, all we can do is look at the past, what's happened in the past, and then make projections into the future and try to think about different types of scenarios that might uh, take place. That's why this break-even analysis is really useful because it helps us to do that usually in a linear format. Now we have a situation where we have a non-linear type of thing happening here. Whereas if we go over a certain point, then there's going to be a, a change to the to the relationship. So then uh, there will also be a cost overruns at this production volume and, and variable costs per, per unit goes up from 9 to 10. So and this could go both ways, right? As, as you think about the variable costs, as you increase the number of units that you purchase, the cost might go down, right? You might get a discount on how much you're purchasing or if you go way over a certain point, it might be harder to get the units and the cost per unit could then be going up. So we're going to say that the cost per unit here, if we go over that threshold, is going to be increasing. The fixed costs are going to be the 60000 Calculate operating income at the 107,000 units and the 207,000 units. So basically what we're going to say here, let's, let's go down to our smaller, this is a smaller recap of our information. We can sell them up to 107,000 and we will then be charging the $18 and then and and we can run our calculation up to that point in time. If we want to sell more than 107,000, then we're going to have to charge $14 not just for not just for the amounts above the 107, but for all all of them, right? Because we're going to say if we want to increase past that point, we're going to have to charge a lower amount. So we can either charge, you know, 18, the higher amount, amount and then possibly cap out, we're thinking around 107. Or if we want to increase to 200 to 207 or increase past the 107 point, we're thinking, well, we can lower the cost uh, because we're, we're going to saturate the market at that point. So we but we can lower it and still sell them, lowering down to the 14 per unit and possibly selling a more of a volume at that point in time. As we do so, if we if we increase past the 107, it's also going to cost us more for the variable costs. Now the cost per unit is going to cost us $10. The fixed cost is going to be uh, the 60000 in either scenario. So if we go up to capacity, so we're thinking here we could go past capacity is what, what our thought is. But if we do that, if we do that, then we're going to we're going to have this problem. We're going to have the, the higher or the lower price and the higher cost. So let's think about this up into the 107000 where we can charge the higher price. If we sold that maxed out, if we maxed out at 107000 the unit sales at 18, the higher price, multiplying that out, we'd have sales of the 1926000 Variable costs then would be the, the unit sold. And notice, of course, we're doing an income statement in a contribution margin type format, sales minus variable costs as opposed to 
the sales minus cost of goods sold because that allows us to have this nice relationship right now being kind of a linear relationship right now until we do the next jump above the 107,000. Then we have the unit variable cost being nine. If we took the 107,000 times the nine, we get the variable cost total of the 963,000. The sales 1,923,26 minus the variable cost 963 gives us contribution margin 963. And then if we take the fixed cost of the 60,000, we are now at the 903,000. Now, if we jump above the 107, then we're going to have to use a completely different cost structure. I can't just use the same scenario. We have to basically re rework it and then put in our variable costs our, in our sales price, which will differ now. So we're going to say, all right, now if I go over that and I, and I assume I can sell uh, 207, we have to basically make a new kind of uh, calculation here. And you can imagine doing this in Excel, and I highly recommend doing it in Excel, that you can now use, use these two kind of scenarios and be changing your inputs for these two different scenarios if you're over this point in time. So anything from zero or, or units up to 107,000, we would be using the first scenario that has a linear relationship. And then after that point in time, we would basically be using our second scenario now being past that 107,000 point and now resulting in there being a lesser sales price if we want to make sales above the 107. So if we make 207, 100,000 more sales, we're going to have to lower the sales price and it'll cost us a dollar more for the variable costs. So we can then run the same thing now. We could say, well, now the sales are going to be units 207, 100,000 more. Unit sales price is now 14. That's going to give us the sales of the 2,898. And then the variable costs now, units sold 207,000 times the cost, which are now 10, as opposed to, I believe, 9 before. That gives us the variable cost of the 2,070. So once again, if we go up top, we're saying, okay, if we think about the unit contribution margin, Notice that before we were selling them for 18 and the cost per unit was nine. So the contribution margin per unit was nine. Whereas now we're selling them only for 14 and the cost per unit went up. So the contribution margin per unit is only four uh, at this point in time, even though we sold 100,000 more units. So that's gonna give us then our contribution margin total at the 828,000, which again, you can also think about taking Right, you could take the 14 minus the 10 contribution margin of 4 times the 207,000, which, which would be the uh, 828,000 contribution margin total. Same kind of calculation. And then if we take out the fixed cost, the 60,000, we're going to get the operating income, the 768,000. So comparing the 768,000 in, in the Unit 2 scenario, notice we went all the way up to uh, 207, another 100,000 units, but we're resulting in less uh, operating income due to the fact, of course, that we have a much smaller uh, contribution margin per unit of four as opposed to eight before. So we can think about this, these two scenarios and be running them. We're gonna cap out at the 107 here. Then we can use this one. We can, If we wanted to keep thinking about this, we could start thinking, well, how high do the sales need to be? to end up with with uh, this being a better option, you know, to, to run this option. So you can think about two different uh, two different scenario or basis that you would be having. And again, if you put this into Excel, which I highly recommend working a problem like this in Excel, you can see how you can fix your data inputs so that you can just adjust the data inputs and have these two different scenarios uh, be working based on this kind of nonlinear type of item where you have this kind of step up that happens at a certain point.